that's what I what this book is about. You know, it's many many different ways of playing tales. It's not a book of uh, fingerings. I, I will of course give some fingerings and and um, but it's more a way of you playing tales uh, in a melodic way, uh, in a creative way. We are talking today with one of my favorite people in the double bass world. I've had him on the podcast before, and it's great to do a round two. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contrabass Conversations, and we are talking today with Marcos Machado, who is, boy, what does Marcos do? I don't even know where to start. He is the author of Tao of Bass, Volume 1, and soon to becoming Volume 2. That's part of what we're talking about today. He also teaches at the University of Southern Mississippi, and he did a wonderful course last fall, fall 2019, called Integral Technique. And that was put out by Discoverable Bass. Marcos went over to England to film this course. And I just love this course. Didn't do a podcast about it. Just the pace of life made it a little challenging. But I did do a review of it. And I love that course. I'm so excited about Volume 2, which is coming soon. So we talk about that much more. And Marcos is going to be joining us for the International Online Bass Summit in June. That's June 24th through the 28th. BassSummit.org is the link. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. That's linked up in the show notes. Marcos is going to be one of our presenters digging into fingering systems. And so if you enjoy this, you'd love to hear more from Marcos. I guarantee you over there. And speaking of the Online Bass Summit, we're into the hundreds in terms of registrants. We've got 70 presenters, I think something like that. It's a who's who in the world of bass from John Clayton to Chichi Nwanoku to Gary Carr, Francois Raboff. By the way, those people have all been on the podcast, except John, but we're getting John on soon. And so many other people. I would love to see you there. I know we're in weird times, but it'd be great to have you there. And we've got some great sponsors for this event. We're going to be featuring a few bits of audio for the next month or so from the sponsors for this event. And I'm proud to say that Nick Lloyd bases. Nick Lloyd is one of the sponsors. He's a past podcast guest and great guy. I've had some really good times with him. Nick <laughs> at the 2018 Base Europe event in Luca, Italy. It was around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So what did Nick do? He went out and bought I don't know how many fans. He must have cleared Luca Italy out of fans, but he just made it his mission to get people more comfortable than they were. And that was much appreciated by me and the other sweaty bassists there. He's done so many other great things for the bass community, and he's one heck of a bass luthier. So we're going to play a clip of him describing how to clean your fingerboard and your strings without dropping your sound post. And there is a video version of this too that's linked up in the show notes. So without further ado, Here's Nick Lloyd from Nick Lloyd Bases. Hello everybody, my name is Nick Lloyd, and today I want to show you how to clean your strings and fingerboard without dropping a sound post. I like having a clean setup, and this is something that any bass player can do at home. So first thing, get your bass horizontal, say on a kitchen table, and there are three things you want to have in front of you. Paper towels, ammonia-free Windex and 4-0 steel wool. So, first step is just detune your base, and then pop the string off the bridge, off the nut, take your steel wool, and rub it up and down the strings. While the tension is off, take the steel wool, and rub it <clears throat> up and down the fingerboard to get rid of all that finger dirt that's been building up over time. And when you're finished with that, Take a piece of paper towel, spray the ammonia-free Windex or glass cleaner into your paper towel, and you can rub it up and down the fingerboard and up and down the string. This will not harm the fingerboard, this will not harm the strings. Put the string back in the nut, back in the bridge, tune it up to pitch, and repeat to the next string. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Nick, for that advice. Folks, check out the video of that. That's linked up in the show notes. And thank you, Nick, for sponsoring the online Base Summit, BaseSummit.org. Very cool. Okay, let's get into this conversation with Marcos. And we're going to start with a clip of Marcos playing the Bottazzini Concerto Number no. 2 Cadenza. We'll end with a little bit of that, too. This is from Marcos's Discoverable Bass course, and it just shows you what a beast he is. <laughs> Thank you. 
What's it like this time of year? Is it okay? It's not getting crazy hot yet, right? This is probably... Uh, it, it's hot. It's pretty hot, but uh, like 80s. Okay. You know, like 70s, 80s. But um, we'll be very, very hot in a couple months. Yeah, a couple of weeks, I would say. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm hanging here, man, 30 days uh, confined at home. Oh, man, yeah. yeah. You're, you're probably doing a lot of teaching like this, right, these days? Yeah. You... That's that's what what I've been doing, you know, teaching, you know, and uh, trying to to keep them sane. Yes, you know, exercising myself, going outside, getting some sun, you know, teaching a little bit more, playing. Mm-hmm. It's it's not easy, you know, but uh, we have to do what we have to do. That's so just for now. I know. Well, you know what I've been digging into more of is your integral technique. I every, oh. every day, man, every day it's on my uh, it's on my uh, uh, practice routine. I've got it in there. I've got your daily warm ups that I do. And look at what I, what I just moved and I brought over very few base books so far. But look at what I do have right now. I got that. Wow. I've got it. <laughs> got it here. So yeah. I, I love it. And, you know, I was just I was in I was in England in January. I was filming a couple of courses for Jeff for Discover Double Bass. Yes, yes I know that. How was, how was that? It was great. It was so it great. was so cool to um to go through and do that. I was doing a couple beginner courses. So it was really yes. it was really interesting. Yes. But Jeff is doing fantastic work man and he he's he's quite a character, an awesome guy. Yeah. I mean it's just I like with all the different people working the cameras and the edit, I mean it's just really it's such a cool way to present this kind of material. And I I was so pumped when I heard that you were doing something with him and then it's been so fun to not only I've been using this for for a few years now, but it's a really cool uh-huh. way uh to hear you presenting that too. And I know yeah. you've got you've got plenty of material on YouTube as well, but it's just it was really I've really enjoyed uh digging into it through that site. Awesome. I'm I'm, I'm- I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoy. I and mean, I had a great time recording. You know? mm-hmm. Great time. Mm-hmm. Next time I will bring some cheap music, but everything was from my mind. You know, so <laughs> got a little bit. <laughs> but it was great. Great time. That's recording. great. That's great. Well, I have been because I know you know I've been looking at this book, Volume One, for years now, and so yes. uh, you're are you getting close to putting out Volume Two, or is it ready well, to go, or where where are you at? Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, yeah. cool. So it's, it's pretty much, uh, I'm, I'm just doing some editing of um, volume two, you know, and I had to work really hard to, to make it uh, not huge, mm-hmm. you know, because <laughs> originally it was like uh, 400, 500 pages. I had to scale down as much as I could. Wow. And um, yeah, and the idea was uh, to, to bring something new, you know, there's a lot of chaos, um, lots of material out there, great material. And uh, I, my, my, the challenge I had was, okay, how, how can I do a scale book that I can actually do what Francois Rabat preaches, that to play, you know, many, many hours of scales every day. And, um, and that's what, I, what this book is about. You know, it's many, many different ways of playing scales. It's not a book of uh, fingering I, I will of course give some fingerings and and then but it's more a way of you playing scales uh in a melodic way uh in a creative way and i i i'm telling you man you're gonna play two hours of scales with a smile on your face it's not only you know repeating a fingering or it's more melodic approach uh to to scales and i I've done an insane research, insane. I researched all violin literature, many Russian uh, violin uh, scale books, flute, trumpet, uh, uh, you know, piano, accordion, you name it. I, I devour uh, all these, these, these books to see how they present scales, you know, and how can I bring that to the base community in a more uh, fresh, more entertaining way. So I'm very proud. I have to tell you, man, I'm very proud of this volume two, much more so than, than volume one. I think it's, 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 and it's going to bring things together. You know, people are going to realize why you need to do all those, those things on volume, volume one. And then here you see kind of more in context. 
Well, I can't wait to dig in. I, I have been thinking about my fingerboard geography differently since especially going through your Discover Double Bass course and like the Davidoff hinge and the ways that you approach um, using all four. I mean, I have used third finger in the lower registers ever since I started playing bass, but but the comprehensive and just very well researched way that that I've seen you present. I mean, it really opened up my eyes. I've been I've been actually on some when I go sub with the San Francisco Symphony, I've been using some of your your fingering concepts and some some literature. And it's really been interesting. So I can't I can't wait to dig into uh, dig into that. And I can't wait to see how you present various ways to get into those two hours of scales. I remember back when I was in high school learning about I thought Raboff, he practices two hours of how can you even do that? Like, like but a little bit. I can't wait to see what you've dug into and how you've presented this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 it's great, I man. It's great that you're using this because uh, that's the goal, you know. The, uh, we, we, it's not like rock science. We all have these fingers, and uh, I think I'm a strong believer, as you know, that we should use all. But it's also uh, the way this kind of fingering they help you to match the fingerboard like harmonically. That's what I think is the main thing about uh, using this, this system. And these are uh, uh, Friedrich Warneck, old German uh, uh, pedagogue based teacher in Leipzig on the, around the late 1800s. He was all about this, you know, about this uh, pivot and four finger technique. And the way he presented was more like a harmonic, based on, on harmony, the importance of, of you kind of, uh, uh, you can take that little block that you're using with fingering and you can actually see all the modes, all the chords, all the, the arpeggios. So I think that's the main, main, main thing uh, about this, this technique. Yeah, and, and in the vol volume two, I'm using that, of course. You know, uh, it's lots of modes, lots of arpeggios, lots of, and one very important big chunk of the book is chromatic. Mm. I really went in chromatic uh, like I never seen before. You know, it's like, um, and I have a whole system about uh, about how how do I perceive chromatic scales. I have a system of mode, <laughs> uh, chromatic scale mode based on fingerings, the harmony uh, that I, I I hear when I'm playing chromatic scales. So I, I'm very excited uh, about sharing that also about um, this concept about uh, chromatic scales because it usually is a stumbling block in, in bass players. You know, like Heifetz would ask a violin players to play a C major scale, right? To, to, to check the, the violin player. I would ask a um, chromatic scale three octaves on bass players. That's when you really can see, you know, the, the, how the guy uh, maneuvers. So lots of chromatic scales on, 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 on this book. I can't wait to check that out too. And I, I, I love, you know, I, I love uh, thinking again back to, cause I've just been watching that course of yours recently. Um, uh, how you show different fingering options and how in a musical situation they make sense, you know, like the, like, uh, and, and, and like the, the, the Davidoff hinge in a certain set, you know, it's just one that's coming to my mind, but it's really, it's interesting how certain things in a melodic context, maybe in, the Von Hall concerto or something, you know, and they just, exactly. they, they lend themselves and just having that extra, uh, th those extra tools in your toolkit. I mean, it just allows you to play more musically and to, you, to, you just have more options when you, when you run into puzzles to solve on the bass. I, I would love exactly. to know, I would love to know, like you strike me as such a scholar of the bass. I mean, this one volume right here is like uh, astonishingly uh, deep. And now I'm just looking, you know, I, I, you've got a multi hundred page volume two coming out. And then what you did, like how, can, and I know we talked about this like several years ago with the first book, but like, how did you develop this knowledge uh, and scholarship of the bass fingerboard? Like I, you, you're originally from Brazil, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell Brazil. me, tell me just about who you studied with and like just some of those influences that led to this knowledge. And I know Francois Raboth is a big part of yeah. it, but maybe just, just, I would love to hear again, like, like the, the yeah. well you're drawing from. Yeah. Uh, well, my first, my very first teacher was a uh, uh, Milton Maciadri senior. He's the father of Maciadri who teaches at the University of Georgia, who mm -hmm. late, I, I came to United States through uh, Maciadri's son. 
that, that was the connection and that's why I'm very grateful to everything he done to me. He brought me over to this country. And, uh, but his father was my first teacher. And on, on my first lesson, he was the principal base of the, um, the OSPA, the Porto Alegre Symphony Orchestra, the, the city where uh, our common friend uh, Alex Peter lived mm -hmm. and many other great, great people. And um, he was amazing because on my very first lesson, you know, I, I, I don't play anything. He starts testing me because I played all the other instruments before. I, I was very active playing electric bass too. And he started showing me, um, uh, asking me, try this, try that. And he would see that I would, of course, gravitate to my classical guitar fingerings or electric bass fingering. And, um, and he said, this is great, but this is, you're going to use this later. I'm going to teach you. He was very Italian school. I will teach you what I know. My Italian school is a very good tradition. It's like Simondo or, or Nani for uh, French. And, uh, you know, it's a strong Italian tradition. And then I hope on top of that, you're going to build your own, own stuff because I see you have a natural facility to this kind of uh, fingering. Then, this is crazy, man. This is unbelievable crazy. On the second lesson, he comes to me, second lesson, I'm playing, you know, first position. And then he gave me a tape, you know, not a CD because there were no CDs on those times, <laughs> but he gave me a cassette tape of uh, Francois Baba playing concerto number two. And he told me, I think you're going to follow that kind of uh, playing, you know, like very fluid, almost like a horn kind of playing on the bass. And he also he gave me other tape of... Um, Writer playing Urbaner Concerto, contemporary stuff. I love that. I, I have those tapes until today with his handwriting. It's like I worship that, you know, it's very important for me. Then, one year and a half playing bass, I played the Bottezini Concerto with this symphony, you know, very quick. It was incredible fast. The learning curve was crazy. Or I was, I, I didn't leave my room, you know, I tracked <laughs> eight hours, 10 hours a day. You know, people joke that they put food to the door, you know. I was into this a lot. And then his son, Newton, Maciadre, the son at the University of Georgia, saw me and immediately he invited me to study with him. I came to Georgia to study with him, you know, and get what? First semester I'm there, who's the guest? Francois Rabat. And that to me was like mind blowing, you know, it's like too much of a coincidence. And then I met Francois. And immediately he showed me stuff. And then I started getting get into that more and more and more. And Newton, uh, Machado, he gave me full approval. He said, do it. You can do this. It's, it's uh, under your, your belt, you know, and great support. And then I went to uh, one of those George Vance camps in um, Maryland. And then I met, I arrived late, you know. I was supposed to play. And I was supposed to play Carmen then. And uh, guess who was there? Proto, and he accompanied me on on piano. We played. We had the instant connection, and then and then I finally uh, had more time with Francois. He invited me to study in Paris with him, and then one thing led to another. And but at the same time, I I'm, I'm very curious. I'm I'm so curious, you know. I, I, I cannot see something and not understand because in order for me to talk about German school or French bow or German bow or four fingers, I have to know. I have to be very proficient to have really uh, scientific uh, opinion about that. So I went to Switzerland to study with Duncan McKeer, very traditional, you know, completely different school, fantastic players, fantastic teachers. Um, I studied, I had some lessons with Gorilla, uh, the big, uh, into the Kruner school, the Romanian school. Um, and I studied with uh, everyone I could, everyone I could, jazz players, classical players, and, and this. And I, I'm, I, I have to quote here the great Isaac Stern. That's kind of my motto, you know. He used to say that uh, you must have uh, an objectivity observing what you're doing and a subjectivity, believing in what you're doing. And that's how I, how I operate. I'm very uh, focused and objective 
analyze what I'm doing, but I'm also subjective to see maybe there's a better way, maybe there's a different way. So this is the this is a, like a, 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 a I resume, you know, uh, uh, how I, I operate in my mind. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then I study everything. I study everything. Like uh, I'm big into Starter, Yannick Starter, his way of um, the cello player. Uh, Pep Gordes, he also is a big influence, the cello. And lots of violin. I love violin. So I'm very influenced by Kojiro Hichi. And he talks, um, Kojiro Hichi talks a lot about uh, how Paganini plays, right? That Paganini used to say that the day people uh, learn that I play only in one position, they all can play my, my pieces. And that's what that means. If he played the violin in one position, meant that he was pivoting around, reaching, mm -hmm. you know? So um, all those influences, all those influences. And I'm very careful, you know, like you're saying in orchestra. I'm very careful because if I'm playing an orchestra, uh, I have to kind of blend with the section. I, can know, I cannot go there and, you know, and do crazy stuff being the, you know, the ugly duck in the bass section. I have to kind of uh, go with the group and uh, I'm very flexible. And, then, and, and that's why I study all, all approaches, you know, to, to be comfortable, to be comfortable. Because all these men, at the end, it's very personal choices or very personal choices. If you're going to see like people like, uh, let me think here, like Zino Francescati, like a famous uh, French violin player, he is all into like pivot on the violin and kind of connecting positions, you know, and always shifting in strong beats. It's a big, big, big player, right? But if you compare to like Luz Persinger, this is the teacher of Fogero Hitchi, teacher of Menuhin. He thinks different. He thinks that you cannot I always think, uh, think uh, that you have to shift in a strong beat. I, he thinks it, it, it uh, becomes a little bit too dry, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very personal. It, it, it all comes down to, to, to what your heart is telling at the end. At the end, it's all about music making, about, uh, you know, uh, showing the, the, the love you have for, for music. But all the, 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 the technical, uh, background i think it's, uh, it's so important for you to have a more scientific um uh, uh reason uh, i like to explain to my students why i'm doing and what are the difference of doing different ways not only telling them tell uh, telling them do like i do and they ask why because i do it i, I don't i never understood that I, that's not enough to me i need to know why you know why so i think that you yeah, well, that's that's something I've always loved about the way it seems that you approach the bass, and in in your in your materials too. You know, w uh, whether you're using pronation uh, or whether you're using finger motion, or that that's kind of a basic way to describe what you talk about. But like, I've really opened up my mind to possibilities, and I think it's interesting because you just present like here's what here's one. Why don't we learn how to do it this way? And then why don't we learn how to do it this way? And then depending on the musical context um, and everything, I, even just the way I orient. My my hand in the lower positions, I think has changed a little bit. Uh, just, just following along with your approach. It's really been, yeah. I just appreciate what you've been putting out there because it's really been making me, uh, uh, think a lot about those, those things that we do every day on the base. Yes. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, I, I, it's really, you know, uh, it makes me very happy, you know, and, uh, I, I, I having this kind of, um, feedback right now, uh, people from all over and all over the world sending me messages asking and I, I'm, I'm pretty busy, you know, because I have a, a usually like a 15, 20 requests a day and asking me to play things from the book or how I would play this Bottezini Pass or this is Strauss. And what you're saying is important because uh, there is a lot of talk about the shape, right? But even, even and it's curious to see how things existed during the same time, you know, uh, if you look at like a, a Simando book, picture, you're going to see uh, some drawings of him and he has a very square hand. Mm -hmm. and that's, But if you look at a, a contemporary, another great uh, uh, pedagogue from that same line, a stern, if you, go, if you find a, 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 a copy of the, the, the real stern, not the, uh, the edition that uh, Fred Zimmerman did, but the real 
book from the 19th century by Sturm, and you're gonna see his drawing. He has a very pronated hand, mm -hmm. very pronated. And Sturm is one that is on the 19th century. He's using pivots. He's using a lot of pivots, and uh, it's called the Sturm gymnastics. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's how he described it, and he was talking about rotating the forearm. And this is 19th century. Wow. You know, so this is um, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's not new. Like, uh, like uh, I, I talk on the integral uh, on the discover double base course too about the Hegner. I was blown away because I was doing some stuff and I said, Wow, this is really cool! You know, I think this is new. And then I got the book, it's around here. The book, I got the book, you know, this is the Hegner yeah. method. And the guy was doing like this crazy, also, you know, hybrid, you know, positions in between positions. He's doing like uh, things like a uh, whole step between second and third finger. You know, so it's very interesting to 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 to, to research and and to dig really deep. You know, in in the base tradition, in the base uh, pedagogic uh, history, to see lots of things happening a, at the same time. You know, the Simonde was very popular because it was published by Schimmer, and uh, and at the same time you had books by Varnack that is showing a completely different approach. To, to to play the bass and and what I think people get confused when they, they see me talking about all this it's um, this integral theory this integral um, theory the theory of everything right this is uh, I'm quoting here like um, Ken Ken Wilber this is the, the the big mind behind this integral theory he tells that like um, uh, cultures and societies are um, always in a process of development right moving from one knowledge Structure to the next, and 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 what's important to 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 notice here is that this next structure includes the old one. You know, I'm not discarding. You know, I'm I don't throw in the trash Nani or Belay or Simando. I'm just adding a new layer on, on top of that, and 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 I think this is a good approach because uh, it covers more territory mm -hmm. you know i have more more information you know it's more layers of knowledge i always joke with my students you know uh, I, I don't think you would uh, want to go to a dentist using 18th century techniques right yeah right <laughs> some foundation knowledge yeah but not the technique so that that that's the approach i want to make this very clear my foundation is it's the base tradition. I respect that so much. I think it's so important. I was talking with a TAV. I was in Paris teaching at the Paris Conservatory a few months ago, and we were talking, and uh, I agree with him 100% how the Simandio or the uh, Italian school or the Belay, they are, are more close. It's very important for the base. It gives you a balance. It's a strong. It gives you nice vibrato. And then you go in and out, out of, uh, out, out of that as you need. But the core, the foundation, you know, the cement of my building is the, is a traditional school. Like uh, I really believe in that. Well, you know, I've been thinking a lot. I would love to, and I'm sure this has changed for you over the years, but I, you know, the, the, what you've put out, I find so, so interesting what I have so far, volume one of Dow of Bass and in Integral Technique. And I've, I've been playing around with how to incorporate it into my own practicing, you know, and I've been doing all sorts of different things. Sometimes I'll, I'll kind of go through it like a book and do like one exercise a day. Sometimes I'll take a week and I'll go real deep on the exercise. And I know there are so many different ways to approach this or just to approach technique in general, but I, I'd love to know, like, what do you do these days in terms of, like, do you have a pretty set practice routine you like to go through? Uh, I've seen you online doing doing various exercises. I know just to, like, I know you do a, a, some pure technique every day, it seems like to me. But, like, uh, what does, what, i just love to know what your time in the practice room these days looks like, like how you structure it. And that's a big question. Yeah. Sorry, but. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a huge question because I, 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 I I use lots of variety, you know. I really like the, the, the concept of uh, interleaving uh, practice, not the block practice. I really, uh, uh, it's very rare for you to see me uh, repeating something over and over and over. With I, I'm more like a, uh, I, I'm a human being, and I, uh, as a human being, I need stimulus. So I need different things happening. So 
what I've been doing lately is uh, uh, first with this, this whole, uh, you know, COVID-19 and all this, one thing that I decided from the beginning when they decided uh, uh, that we should do this uh, quarantine to protect people, I'm all for that, but I decided I will keep a schedule. I will keep a schedule because it's very easy for you to, you know, oh, you know, I'm going to, since I don't have like the usual um, uh, demands and appointments, I will be more flexible. No, I decide I'm waking up at the same time. I always wake up and I, I'm following my routine. I dress up. My daughter sometimes look at me, where are you going? You know, you're going out? No, I need to do that. You know, I need to do that. I cannot walk in my pajamas. And so what I do usually for a long time now, I would say for the past like two, three years, uh, I pick the bass and I just play. No warm up. Sometimes I forget to tune and I even upload videos. <laughs> and then I realize, oh, I should have tuned the bass. But uh, I, I, that's very important for me. It's like, uh, it, it works to me like meditation. You know, I pick the bass and I'm very, you know, relaxed and I'm just enjoying the sound. I play a little bit, you know, and uh, it's very important for me. I read, I'm uh, constantly, um, uh, as, as I told you, researching. I just got uh, a couple months ago a big box of books from uh, Italy, rare books by a uh, method by Marangoni, uh, Galignani. So I'm going devouring that. So I do that in the morning, I read. Then, then I look uh, on my Instagram page and, and what the requests are. Lots of students from everywhere, from Iran, from, you know, Uruguay, from Brazil, from United States, from Germany. And then I see what they ask and what should I share? Many, many of the things they ask, I send privately because I don't, you know, it's too private. Or, and I see, oh, this guy is asking how I would approach, I don't know, this Bottesini. So I read that and I, I upload that as a, to share. Many people send me uh, new stuff and I read and it, I upload immediately. There is like, it's a, 10 minute process, you know, I read and I upload that, the fact, and, uh, and that to keep me, you know, um, um, entertained, man, yeah. I need that for entertainment. Then I go to breakfast and then I come back, focus on what I need to do. Nowadays, I do little technique, very little technique because I've done that so much. But uh, if I feel something, you know, if I feel something, you know, I, I, if I feel, oh, my third finger feels a little bit funny or my wrist, then I focus on that, specifically on that. And that's what I recommend my students to, to do with the towel. You know, I had a couple of crazy students that they kind of go the towel, you know, the whole thing. It's incredible. You know, it takes me like, I don't know, six hours to do that. And they are working like, and what I think, there's so much information there that and if you learn, there's a, uh, keep, uh, there's a little secret inside the book. If you start discovering the book, I have some students from all over that they are discovering. And that's the most uh, uh, joy I have. Uh, like there's a couple pages, like three or four pages that are specifically for some position, a coordination between the second and third finger. There are a couple pages packed together there that uh, it pivots in two strings. There's little pack mm -hmm. inside the book. And that's what I recommend you to do, you know, if let's say you want to improve your, your um, shifting, but shifting connecting, not single notes, but connecting positions. There's a, there's a section there to help with that. You want to improve like um, pivot across four strings. There are sections there for that. So it's a, it's a book. It's like the Tao. Yeah. It's like the Lao Tzu Tao uh, teaching book. It has no beginning, no end. You can open that book, you know, and you can go to, you know, to poem or, or to, you know, philosophy number 30. And it's fresh, it's new, has no beginning, has no end. And I think that's what the book is, you know. It, it, it's not a progressive book. And, and, and I don't think I have uh, inside of me uh, uh, an ambition of writing a book that's progressive, like uh, incredible done and done, uh, work done by, you know, Belay or, Mande or Francois more recently or Montag, all those great pedagogues that they did step by step. 
I think that is done. We have great material. Mine is more something, it's like, it's a dream book that I want to have when I was in college. And I want one book with everything, with people, uh, cheap, speed exercises, you know, uh, for string uh, exercises. Uh, that was my dream, you know? So I think that's the, 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 the function of the book. It's a book for you to use, combine with, uh, with uh, whatever you've been using lately. Yeah, I love it. It's it's been really interesting for me just personally to go through and then find something that seems to like resonate with where I'm at musically and, or something where I feel like, oh yeah, I that you know, I could feel something sort of unlocking. So it's interesting. And as you're describing it, that really is what it feels like to me. Yeah, it's it's like this it's this it's not a it's not a, a modular journey through the bass. It's it's uh yeah, there is no beginning or end. That's a good way to yeah. that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, and if you look uh, look at the season right if you look sometimes you go to the more uh, uh towards the middle of the book or the uh, end and there is very uh, intimidating looking exercises there but i think the hardest thing to play beautifully you know and perfectly in the beginning of the book with very simple patterns you know because everything must be perfect you know the way you're moving the fingering the way you're lifting or releasing or doing the torque you know the coordination so it's very deceiving you know uh, i have students uh, very advanced students that they, they can you know blast over some uh, advanced etudes and they have major issues with the easy beginning mm-hmm. of the book i'm quoting quote <laughs> marks here because um i the, and the more we play i think you're the same right the more we play the more we practice we realize the hardest is to play simple yeah the hardest is to play simple well you know well, I, I can't wait to check out this volume two. Do you have a do you have a release date for it or, or? I don't have a I don't have a release, but I'm speeding up because finally I'm doing the finale work. Mm-hmm. You know because uh, so I, usually I, I use students. I'm still using students as uh, to help me with the major major things. But um, now with me working uh, on this, I think it's going to speed up the process. And I'm in this kind of process now. You know, I have like a. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. This is like, this is how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, it's, it's going to be at my practice stand soon. I can't, I can't I wait. So, man. <laughs> so I, I, I'm hoping I'm definitely, uh, uh, definitely uh, after, you know, after this semester is over, for sure, this summer, this summer for sure. And because it's, it's so many people asking, you know, even the local great players like my heroes, like Thomas Martin, you know, usually he sends me, when is the book? I need the volume two, I need the volume two. So I, I better do this, you know, I better do this as, as quick as possible. So I'm hoping and aiming uh, for the summer later. Okay. Well, I can't mm-hmm. wait. I'll be sure to to spread the word as soon as it comes out, and I'll link up to DaoBase dot com, the website, and and of course you on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and everywhere. And I'll just send people to because I I really enjoy seeing what what comes out uh, th- through those channels. I think it's just such a cool way that you're interacting with the global base community. It's really interesting. It's got to be really interesting to uh, open up that Instagram uh, and see what people are asking about what a, what a it, cool it, thing man it, it, i have to tell you man it's one of the coolest thing i ever done in my life because to get messages uh bass players from uh you know from uh syria mm-hmm. iran you know philippines malaysia i didn't know they have you know bass players in malaysia and uh, you know greece uh, uh, bolivia it's mind blowing and mind blowing, you know. It's and this interaction, you know, they ask. I send the I send the the what they ask uh, the a video explaining, and then they send their video back. It's incredible, incredible, and it and shows us how connected we are, man. How we are kind of uh, we are one, you know. And all this that is happening right now, I, I think is is gonna help uh, us to to show uh, how connected. How unified we are! How something that uh, uh, you do can affect, you know, in a very short term, a, a person that is in the other side of the planet. I think this is what's happening. Is a I call it like a great equalizer. You know, it puts everyone on the same. I don't care how much money you have 
which color you are. If this thing happens to you, you're gonna be equalized. You know, it it hurts every single one of us. So I I think uh, it's a lesson, a lesson, and connecting with these bass players uh, from everywhere is a blessing. Yeah. It is. Well, I can't, I can't wait to win. We're through this, uh, boy, is that I, I always have a good time at base events, but I'm going to appreciate it so much, you know, never take it for granted, you know, at, when we finally get a chance to see folks in person, I can't wait to see you in person. One of the, I still, yes. have we met in person yet? I don't know that we not, have. I think we've all, yet, we, we've almost been at the same, like I was, I was set to go to Johnny Hamill's workshop la, uh, last summer. And then, uh, Barry green, I had, I'd committed his workshop before that and I you know, so one of these days we'll sit down and we'll do this in person and you, my friend anytime I, I'll have you on the show every week if you want it's great I can't believe it's been like I, it's been like three years at least since we yeah, chatted yeah, um, yeah. maybe even four but but I can't yeah. but I can't wait to see the new book and see you in person and I see we got volume three and four coming up <laughs> at yes. some future Welcome. future date. Yes. So. Well, same here, man. Same here. And I'm looking forward to, to see you and, uh, and and finally, you know, share share some ideas. And I I I think I talk in, in, in name of the all all base players around the world, man. Thank you so much to for everything you do, man. You kind of bring the community together, and this is priceless. The the, the work you do is like remarkable. We we really appreciate. It. Marcos, folks, check out Dow of Base. Check out Marcos's website, marcosmachado.com. That's linked up to in the show notes. Definitely check out Integral Technique from Discover Double Base. What a cool course. And I just had a great time chatting with Marcos. I hope you're enjoying these podcasts and they are some source of comfort or normalcy to you. I'll tell you what they help with for me is just looking at that number. We're creeping up on 700 episodes and I look at when the pandemic started and that was like six. I was looking at like six seventy or six seventy five or something like that. Uh, and I guess it seems like a lot of numbers, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, I think, okay, I've done 700 of these. We've only been pandemic mode for a fraction of that. So maybe that's a nerdy, weird way to get some perspective, but it seems to help me. Hopefully you are doing well. Again, I'll reiterate, I would love to see you at the International Online Base Summit. What a cool event. And yeah, I hope that you're able to join me, join Marcos and all the other people that are there. I want to give a huge thanks to the people that help put this podcast together. They are Michael Cooper, Steve Hinchy, Trevor Jones, and Mitch Mooring, who makes beautiful bases in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Learn more at MitchMooring.com. Thank you also to Krista Copper for archiving and cataloging and doing a fantastic job keeping track of all the variety of topics that are covered here. So thank you, Krista. Thank you, Marcos, for chatting today. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jason Heath, and we will see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum.